see, breasts mean different things to different people. So I thought now we'd talk to someone who, who well, started off life as a man, but is now definitely all woman. Would you please welcome from the Extreme Nightclub in Parramatta, the one, the only, Miss Penny Clifford. Penny, well, look, I have to just say that you have magnificent, magnificent breasts. Did you grow them yourself? No, I paid for them myself. You paid for them yourself? Yes. How much did they cost? Um, $500 each and about $4,500 handling fee. <laughs> Obviously, it was a good handle. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, look, let's just get straight stuck into it because no foreplay, you're a woman now, get used to it. <laughs> Penny. But hands up those who've never seen a man like me before. You've never been to Lay Girls, you dirty bugger, have yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Lay Girls. How did you get into well, Lay Girls? Well, I was, I was a little kid that, you know, suddenly decided that I liked wearing dresses. Yeah? You know, and I used to rip the chiffon curtains off when Mum and Dad went shopping and wrap them around me and go, oh, I like this. Pretend you were Jan Brady, of course. <laughs> no, I think it was um, Petula Clark. Oh, you're no, Petula no, Clark. <laughs> no, no, actually, it was, no, I can't. It's showing my age, isn't it? Never mind. We're all, Chula Club. We're all 21 yeah, okay. here. And um, so then suddenly one day I discovered a tablet called Hormones. Now hang on, let's just start. So you went to a doctor mm -hmm. and he prescribed? Uh, Stabistrol hormone. Right, and what did that do? Gave me really big tits. Really? Mm. Were there any side effects with that hormone? Uh, yeah, it gave you cancer. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah, it's only a small side effect, but when they discovered it, they whipped it off that chemist and down went my boobs. They put me on estrogen. Yeah. So I went from a, a C cup to an 12A. And that was a traumatic experience? It was very traumatic. When you have big boobs and suddenly you have small boobs, you want big boobs again. So, so what did you do? I had a sex change. But... So you had this sex change. So they, so they created a wawa for you, obviously. A uh, what? A valva. Yes. A vulva. Yes. <laughs> well, you pay $16,000 for something, you want it to work, don't you? It's like buying a new car, isn't it? Correct. Yes. And it does work? Um, yes. Uh, I'm glad to know it. Yes. So, in terms of your defining yourself as a woman, what meant more, the, the sex change or having the breasts? As a woman, I think the sex change probably. Now, that's but not what as being a say. happy woman was the breast. Sorry. What did you... Well, you wanted to know what was more important to be a woman yeah. would be the sex change, but yeah. to be a very happy woman would be having big breasts. But they weren't always that size. No. We've actually had implants here. Yes, we have. We've had the new ones from America that are called teardrop saline. Really? So did you So they're shaped like a teardrop, so you don't get that sort of basketball effect at the top. So did you actually specify whose breasts you wanted them to look like? Um, yeah, well... In some of the shows that I've done, I've been introduced as the Elle McPherson of the drag world, and, and every time I was introduced like that, I'd look down and go, how? Because there was this small boob. So I walked into a, a doctor's surgery and I went, I want to have Elle McPherson's breast. As you would, because of course, of course yeah. Elle in the Australian colloquial yeah. means big tit. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, so, how did they actually put them in? Underneath. We got a, a, can you show? Oh, I can't even see a scalp. Just a tiny little weenie scar. Very little. They pump them up, the, the new models, they pump them up at 30 mils a time. And so they just sort of get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so that's the deluxe version. It's not like you went to a Tupperware party and no, said, I'll no. get the lettuce Christmas. <laughs> Although there is a good joke around that I have been to a Tupperware party on occasion. Yeah. But that's because I've had so much plastic surgery. So tell me, with them, um, where else? Where else have you had plastic? Where else? Oh, no, we wouldn't. That's a little secret, isn't it? Oh, it's just, you know, a nip here and a tuck there and, you know. So when you had your breasts enlarged, did you notice, what was the different reaction to people on the street? Did it make a difference going from a well, 12 Well, being so tall, I always walked down the street and I'd always get a, a truck driver wolf whistling at me or something, but now it's, they sort of tend to run into the car behind them or something. <laughs> so no, they just whistled before, now they just crash right up there. <laughs> and what about your boyfriend? Does he prefer you with bigger breasts? Well, he can't keep his hands off them. Really? Yes, yeah, like um, we'll be in the movies and suddenly, you know, one hand just clasps on there and he calls them his twins or his babies. Does he? Yeah, I call them the Gabor sisters. This is Eva and Zaza. <laughs> <laughs> because 
because occasionally Zaza likes to slap policemen in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you go whack. Yeah, you have to do that. So having bigger breasts, how did that make you feel as a, as a woman? Well, clothes fit a lot better. Mm. It's nice to be able to wear clothes and not always have that wonder bra choking you up here, trying to form some sort of cleavage. And, and it, you know, a lot of my girlfriends have always had huge boobs, so I was always the one standing at the bar going... and looking at theirs and always feeling jealous. And, Pigeon's naked. And now they're, like, three months old. Yeah. They're only three months old, and so I'm still noticing a change, but it's... I haven't been to the beach yet, but I'm dying to go to Tamarama Beach. For those of you that go to Tamarama <laughs> Beach, you just sit in the smallest string bikini I can possibly find. And what are men's responses to your breasts? Well, being my, at the height I am, if you get a man up here, you notice that a reasonable average height man just talks to my chest. And how does that make you feel as well, a woman? Well, I never noticed that before. See, I'd be standing at a bar with my girlfriends and, all, and the guys would come up and they would talk to their chest and then they would look at me right in the face and I would always think there's something really wrong here. Yeah. And now all of a sudden I realise that they're talking to my chest. You've also got fantastic legs. Isn't it weird how men have the legs that they want women to have? I think there's something really perverse about that. They're absolutely, you know, Sorry, wonderful. because I work out. You work out on your legs. Tell me, what are your favourite uses for your breasts? <laughs> How? No, please. Well, my boyfriend likes to stick things in the middle of them. <laughs> and whereas once before I really had to push hard and pretend, I don't need to pretend anymore. <laughs> when you're really tired and you're standing at a desk waiting to be served, you can rest a lot easier. <laughs> And when you're drinking coffee, you don't have to look for a place to put it. You can just shove it down there. <laughs> Penny Clifford, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Ladies and gentlemen, Penny Clifford.